Hello and welcome back to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and we're on day six of Sculpt January. Okay, um, I ought to say before we start, uh, links from the description for the graphics tablets I would recommend and uh, the graphics tablet I use and uh, the skin modifier which is going to be important if you want to know how I did um, today's lesson. And also I'm going to have a link about how you can create a tree using the skin modifier. Um, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, I was quite pleased with how this turned out. I'm quite happy uh, with my little bonsai tree. Um, the, the topic is tiny, which is quite tough really, uh, when you start thinking of tiny things. And I thought of a, a tiny tree. And I thought that worked out quite nicely in terms of fitting into the um, concept. Uh, I've always had a fascination with bonsai. There's something uh, quite amazing about uh, those artists, those bonsai artists that make these amazing trees. Uh, and they are quite clever in the way that they uh, make them look like big trees when they're in tiny pots. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind, kind of into bonsai. I used to actually have some bonsai. Well, I still, kind of still do, but I don't have time to look after them. They take a lot of care and attention, and I'm not that sort of person. Uh, so there's me using the skin modifier and um, starting with the cube, uh, joining all the vertices together uh, and then adding the skin modifier and a subdivision surface modifier and then changing the size of the different points with control A. And I go around, it is important uh, I think, um, and I've sort of uh, shown a lot of students this technique, which I, I think is a good technique uh, using the skin modifier. Uh, but uh, they don't look at a tree first. I know that sounds silly, uh, but everybody has an idea of what a tree looks like, uh, but it's probably wrong. Uh, have good reference images, as I always say, um, but try and mimic the shapes and how the branches grow, because they do grow in a certain format and uh, way. <laughs> so um, I wanted to have one growing over a rock, so I did the rock as well and sort of sculpted that in. In a sense, uh, I would say this was more a modelling exercise than it was a sculpting exercise uh, because I had only uh, two hours and this did take two hours, although there was a lot of faffing around in EV and cycles again, although I'm getting better I'm getting better. I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but it uh, ended up being more a modelling exercise than a sculpting exercise uh, because of that. So uh, modelling the bowl and the, um, uh, the leaf, leafy branches, bits, uh, with the transparency um, and sort of slotting those all in uh, but it's good to do that um, it's good to sort of combine your sculpts with modeling because that's uh, probably more common I would say um, to a degree um, as even sort of ZBrush artists uh, who are building uh, figures and things uh, they will model a lot of their work and then sculpt the last detail stages so having a good understanding of box modeling and so forth is vital in my opinion. Uh, so you can't really just be a sculptor. Maybe that's something for the future though actually, maybe you will be able to be just a sculptor. Um, but yeah, no, that's uh, debatable that one. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, I'm slowly getting there, uh, working on the base shape but it's not in a sculpting way, I'm just working on the base shape in terms of the modelling. Thought I'd test out whether the uh, test out whether the leaves were going to work. So I got some images off uh, textures.com, and this is where I struggled with uh, EV. Um, I brought the textures in, just drag and drop them in because I used to work with uh, images as planes plugin, uh, but it makes them empties, and I couldn't figure out how to stop that happening. So a lot of the time I'm doing something, and I haven't got time to research it because I'm in the middle of a sculpt, and I know it's going to take. Uh, at least half an hour to find out how to do it uh, because I'm not very good at researching obviously um, so uh, so I just sort of uh, stick with what I knew and uh, brought them in in a different way and set them up and I set them up in Eevee at first which was the right setup uh, with the alpha channel going into the factor of a mix shader going into the transparent that's how you do it um, but um, I'll, I'll bring out a tutorial on that because that's a fairly straightforward one and I might even be able to fit that in in the next couple of days uh, but um, that's how you do it but it didn't work in Eevee and I couldn't figure out why and I didn't have time and ended up uh, waiting I don't know it was 
it must have been about three hours for it to render in cycles and it really does go to show that EV is a bit of a game changer when it comes to uh, this sort of workflow really. Uh, when you're trying to get something done quickly you can get good results um, and it's uh, fantastic compared to cycles uh, which is realistic re results because of the light bounce and so forth um, but the time it takes it's incredible. Um, I woke up this morning and thought oh, well, I'm uh, recording I'll have a quick go and see if I can figure out how to do the transparent shader in Eevee and uh, forgot to tick uh, you have to change the transparent settings in the actual material uh, to from opaque to alpha uh, and I've forgotten to do that uh, so you can kind of see me testing here in EV and it's not working so I have to switch over to cycles to see my transparencies uh, so yes uh, long story short I got it working in the end and uh, was able to render quickly in the end after leaving it overnight uh, to render uh, so yes getting there with EV it's nice and uh, it makes me happy to think that I've got this <laughs> render engine now but, and I've got it sort of under control. Uh, soft shadows as well is uh, another thing that's uh, very important uh, because they seem to get sort of very really liney and blocky if you don't use soft shadows. Uh, so that's quite nice. Uh, getting there, getting there. Uh, so yes, uh, finally getting around to sculpting. Um, I like sculpting trees, there's that sort of organic feel and it. you're just sort of drawing these strokes uh, across them. But first working on the base shape of course, uh, making sure I'm happy with that. Uh, I did use some sculpting brushes on the rock, uh, it's just much easier and quicker and again uh, time constraints, um, I have to think about those sort of things. Did have a crash there as well actually, uh, but saving regularly, I am saving regularly. Um, yeah, so uh, get the rough rock shape uh, before, and it's, as I always say, it's about getting that basic shape right first, and then you go in and do the details. Uh, very important. Um, I use lots of different rocks, um, rock brushes. I think most of them are from textures.com. Uh, fantastic site, really. You get 15 free credits, and um, they're daily uh, credits that get renewed. Uh, some of their scan textures you can't get with the 15 credits, you have to buy those. Um, but generally speaking, there's some great stuff on there. Um, I did try using the rock brushes first uh, and then thought actually the shape needs modifying. Didn't have enough sharp edges and it's a bit blobby. I do save the word blob a lot, don't I? Um, anyway, so I got that shape with the Scrape P uh, brush. It was Scrape Peak brush, not P. Scrape Peak brush, uh, which uh, scrapes the way peaks, uh, which uh, you, you kind of get used to these brushes when you use them a fair bit, although I still don't know what some of them do. Um, so yes, uh, now going into the detailed areas and pulling and pushing around, making sure I'm happy with this rock shape and getting sort of sharp pointiness to this um, uh, rock. And using a, uh, about three different brushes, not just the same rock brush. Uh, don't use shortcuts there, uh, it's important to have variation in your shape when you're doing rocks. So uh, happy with the rock uh, and then onto the tree. I did find uh, that when I baked my normal maps, because I'm trying to keep the whole thing under 40,000 um, faces uh, so it's optimized for Sketchfab and so forth. Even though Sketchfab will take more faces, um, I want to make it optimized. Uh, so people can watch it on their mobiles and all that sort of thing. Um, but I'm finding I'm losing so much detail in my normal maps. Uh, the, the lower you go in detail, uh, the harder it is for the, nor the the more work there is for the normal map to do uh, when mapping it to your original shape. Um, so uh, that is a frustration really, and I'm not quite sure how to get around that. I suppose that's one of those things that's going to improve as time goes by, and uh, we'll be able to use more polys uh, and eventually we probably won't even need normal maps so uh, learning the baking process inside out although it is important at the moment I reckon in the future it's not going to be as important and we'll just be able to sculpt away with millions of polygons and then just press a special button which will retopologize it and do everything for you and make it into a game character I'm looking forward to that day but by that time computers have probably taken over uh, and I'll be dead in the war against AI. Uh, yeah, sorry, slight aside there. Um, 
here we go. Uh, yes, roots. Uh, so I looked back at some uh, reference images and thought, actually, there's not enough roots on there. I'll quickly do another couple, but there isn't really enough. You'd have roots going all over the place with this, but it's still, uh, it's uh, it's from a different planet. This bonsai. Uh, yes, and you can see me doing this sort of uh, crease brush and uh, sticking up bits of bark. It's quite fun, but I was. Uh, I was, I don't know, I think about an hour in here and starting to think I need to be fairly quick so I don't go overboard this time. Uh, and it, it turned out quite nice, I think, but like I said, I lost a lot of information in the normal map and I really would have loved to have painted uh, the finished um, tree anyway. The rock's not so bad. You can get away with that sort of uniform colour and just add a bit of a noise texture to the colour and things, which I didn't do, actually. Just remind myself. <laughs> Um, I added a noise texture uh, to vary the colour on the uh, tree, but it needed a fair bit more work and a bit more time, really. And I'm much more of a painter than a procedural texture. Uh, and uh, I suppose a combination of the two is a good thing to do. Here I'm actually rushing, uh, in a sense, or t um, you know, doing shortcuts uh, by using the rock brush on the tree to give it a sort of barky, rough texture. And it worked quite well, so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, a few sort of nodules, nob, nobbles, whatever, I don't know what those things are, that sort of stick out uh, from the trees, uh, especially old trees, so they get those little uh, knobs. Um, I'm saying weird words now, so I'm just gonna make myself look silly again. Um, so there, you could see my finished result there, and I thought it looked quite nice, but it didn't look as good in the final render because of the reduction in polys. Um, uh, with the floor, I just put a quick um, displacement on it and uh, so it just looked bumpy. Uh, I could have just used the noise texture. So there it is, my final result and I'm, yeah, I'm pleased with this one. I'm really happy that I've figured out Eevee a bit more um, and yeah, is that my finished texture? That is my finished one, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> what am I talking about? Here's a really great one from Johnny Fraser and uh, I, I was so impressed with that. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, I've got to show you that. Uh, so get along to Sculpt January, see what's going on there. Here's another one from Asha Basha, I think he calls himself on Sketchfab. Um, and he's uh, on the Discord server, and he showed this one, and I thought that's very impressive, better than my Apple anyway. Uh, so that was the one for Rotten. So do get across to the Discord server and uh, chat to me there. Uh, remember to uh, put the at grant so that I can see your messages, because there's quite a lot of messages to go through, and I, I can't read them all, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time if you're still with me, watching uh, me ramble on about my sculpts. Uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, see you next time.